will join. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Welcome everybody for our uh, weekly seminar series. Um, and today we are moving to Spain, uh, to sunny, beautiful Spain, and we are hosting Dr. Francisco Jimenez Espejo from the University of Granada in Spain. A short information about uh, Francisco. Um, Dr. Francisco Jimenez Espejo is a staff scientist at the Instituto Andaluz de Ciencias de la Tierra, um, which is the Spanish, um, belongs to the Spanish Research Council. And he is an external researcher at the Bio Biogeochemistry Research Center of the Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science, or JAMSTEC, in uh, Yokosura, Yokosuka, sorry, in Japan. Um, Francisco studied and got his uh, PhD in Granada University in 2007, and then he completed his postdoctoral training in the Nagoya University and JAMSTEC in Japan. He then obtained a tenure track in JAMSTEC in 2018. He has participated in a total of eight marine expeditions, including three IODP expeditions, which is 318 Wilkins Land in Antarctica, 339 in the Mediterranean outflow, and 361 in South African climates, and five more expeditions on board the Chikyu, which is the largest scientific vessel in the planet, in the Indian Ocean, and uh, the research vessel Yokosuka in the Oshkosk Sea, sorry if I don't pronounce it right, and uh, and other uh, in the Alboran Sea and Weddell Sea, also in Antarctica. His main specialty is the mineralogical and inorganic isotopic geochemical analysis of marine and continental sediments, including lakes, caves, and archaeological sites in middle and high latitudes. His research, his research in geomarine sciences has been focusing on unraveling paleo-oceanography, climate, ice sheets, and oceanic variability during past warm intervals in the past 7 million years. The effect of ocean bottom currents has in ocean circulation and ice sheet dynamics and contourite and other transport deposits at paleoenvironmental records. This research is achieved through the integration of geochemical and sedimentological data, which is also the interest of comparison between climate change and human cultural evolution. Uh, before I pass the, uh, the word to Francis, I want to emphasize the importance of being a member of IODP and you can, what we can take out of uh, being a membership and hopefully we will go back to be a member. Israel was a member for three years and um, I hope that um, new, new, new changes in the government that happened in the last year will make this happen again. And Francis is exactly the, uh, uh, the best example for what you can do with IODP, right? So uh, today we're hosting him and he's going to talk about the Mediterranean outflow and the contract depositional system in the Gulf of Cadiz, insights from IODP Expedition 339. So with this word, I, I, get you, I give you to talk in the podium. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nicolas, for this kind presentation. Uh, for me, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you and to meet you, the student and, and the University of Haifa. Uh, I was thinking to stay with you. In, in, uh, I was thinking to travel to Israel during this week, but unfortunately, I must cancel in the last minute. But anyway, sooner or later, I think I will be with you uh, this year, next year. So thank you for the introduction. And uh, before I start with my presentation, oops. Okay, I would like to thanks to the uh, and Nicholas. Please, if is any trouble any moment, just let me know. I don't know if I speak too quickly or any problem with the connection. Just let me know in any moment, please. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank. Uh, to co-chief, uh, to Javier Hernández Molina, co-chief of the expedition, that uh, basically uh, he teach me everything about uh, what I know about contract, and also to to all the, the scientific party and all the staff of IODP. You can see here all the people on board of the ship, 
uh, that all work together during the drilling and the scientific uh, stuff because it was a absolutely wonderful expedition. Everybody was very nice and in a very collaborative environment. Okay, so here's the three main concepts I will discuss and will try to discuss with you. Well, uh, it's the Mediterranean outflow, contourite, and IODP expedition 339. Uh, I will go uh, quickly through many concepts. Uh, so maybe you can be lost at some point, but my main target is to increase your curiosity about this concept. So basically, just I will show a brief introduction of each one. And I hope later you have many doubts and questions and also every, everyone by himself will start to, to go deeper in this, in this issue. Okay, Mediterranean outflow. I don't know if you are familiar with the submarine circulation in the Mediterranean. Uh, basically, we have here one, uh, the, the surface circulation. So the water is coming from the Atlantic into the Mediterranean. And here we have the intermediate uh, water circulation and here the deep water circulation. Okay, basically we have many different water masses, uh, Atlantic water, Levantine intermediate water, and at the end, all these uh, water masses go out through the Gibraltar Strait and only one is coming inside the Atlantic water. And when the, when the, here we have one transect. I'm sorry, I, we cannot see the top. I don't know how to move. So basically we have one transect from Haifa to, to the northern of Ireland. And here you can see one, this transect in the Mediterranean where we can see how the Atlantic water is modified uh, increase the density and finally start to sink and generate this Levantine intermediate water that goes through the Sicilian Sea until reaching the Western Mediterranean. And finally, when they go through the Gibraltar Strait, they make the Mediterranean outflow. In this other transit from the Gulf of Cadiz to the north of Ireland, we can see the Mediterranean outflow basically sinks at intermediate depth. That is something very interesting. It's not so many water that uh, in the present day in thermal circulation that uh, reach intermediate depths. And uh, uh, one depth around uh, 1,000 meter flow close to the margin, to the Western European margin, and reach this area where the uh, different studies show that uh, there, is, there is some correlation between the Mediterranean outflow in the, on the temperature in this, on the sea surface in this region. Uh, in the past, during a certain period of the past, few studies say that Mediterranean outflow water could play a key role. For uh, example, during the last deglaciation, few studies say that, uh, I mean, depending the influence of the Nile in this region, I mean, when the Nile is very strong, we have a lot of fresh water. Uh, so we cannot generate intermediate of deep water. So that's make uh, the Mediterranean outflow is more, less powerful. And that's make that this area of the ocean is cooler. But when the, the monsoon activity is low in the Northern Hemisphere, we can generate more intense water that promote uh, more warm water in the Atlantic fasciate of the, in the, uh, of the European continent. And this increase in temperature increases also the humidity that would feed the European ice sheet. So, I mean, during certain periods, the, the mob could be really, really important. Okay, uh, as you can imagine, the Gulf of Cadiz is a key location for study the Mediterranean Oslo. So basically here, we can see, uh, we can see how the Mediterranean Oslo go out. I prepared a few video. Uh, I mean, you have many videos on YouTube about Mediterranean Oslo. It's, it's wonderful video reconstruction. If we have time, I can show you the video later. But basically the Mediterranean Oslo goes through here, go close to the margin, and you have different branch because it's also an interaction between the Mediterranean outflow and the bathymetry. So here we have uh, uh, the Iberian Peninsula, here we have uh, Northern Africa, and here, here is the bathymetry uh, in the Atlantic uh, Ocean. Okay, so I hope that uh, now you are more familiar with Mediterranean outflow. So let's move to the contourite. Contourite uh, is uh, I don't know, sorry, how to take out this upper part. But anyway, contourite 
uh, is defined like sediment deposit or substantially rework by persistent action of bottom current. So this is how it looks like contourite in present day condition in the Gulf of Cadiz. Uh, this term is not usually employed by physical oceanographer and basically are generated by semi-permanent water mass flow uh, capable of eroding, transporting and deposing sediment on the seafloor. Uh, independently of the wind, if they are wind drive current, semonic current, eustrophic current, or any kind of current that is on the bottom of the ocean. So in this very nice plot by Robesco and Hernandez Molina in marine geology, uh, you can see the three main components, the main, three main forcing of the sediment, the marine sediment. So we have what we call, and it's very familiar for every body, pelagite, that basically are dominated by pelagic settling. And we have the, the also common turbidite that they are dominated by density current and with a typical BOMA sequence with, uh, with this kind of uh, brain cause. Uh, the, the brain side is caused here and fine on the top. And later we have contourite. Uh, at the end, every sediment on the ocean has something of these three main components. And contourite is the, this is the, the classical sequence. So we can see. Uh, here, the, the sandy part. So we have fine. I mean, when they, the, the current increase, we have a more strong uh, brain size. And later, when the current was more weaker, we have less. Um, also, you can see here that uh, bioturbation also is uh, play a major role in this kind of contract deposit. Contrary deposit is a quite recent concept. Um, maybe many colleagues are not familiar or they don't like uh, too much the concept of contourite. It's basically in the 90s, when we start to appear the first uh, classification of contourite and contourite drift. And so, I mean, um, and uh, I think that after expedition 339, people become more familiar and accept this concept. But uh, just let you know that a few people uh, are still not familiar with contourite. Um, few people don't like because they don't like to think about uh, rework sediment because if one sediment is reworked, that also can affect the, the proxy interpretation. Okay, but uh, this concept also is a big interest for oil companies because uh, uh, contract promote very nice sandy deposit that they, they are great uh, reservoir layers, and also for paleoclimatology because contract have a very high sedimentation rate and you can get a high resolution, uh, you can study at very high resolution few climatic events. Okay, here's to have one sketch of one typical contourite deposit. Here is the continental shelf, and here is the current going close to the continental shelf, and in this side, you have the contouring deposit. It's basically it's like a, some kind of river, like a river inside the, the ocean, and uh, here you have less speed and you have this deposition. So basically they have a, this deposited have a long slope elongation. You can see that it's very different from the typical uh, channel DB system, even they look similar, but uh, it's totally different. Because I mean, you, here you have the continental self edge, you have the gravity, the, the, the turbidity current, and you have this deposit close to, to the gravity uh, current, and you have the one down slope elongation instead of this along slope elongation. Okay. And uh, this is how it looks like contourite in one uh, seismic profile. So basically, this is a, a sketch. This is like uh, 1,000 meter, just for keep in mind this, this scale. So here is the continental shelf. Here is the mode where the Mediterranean outflow is moving. And here is the different sediment drift. Okay. Um, this is how it looks like how it looks the sediment. So basically, uh, contourite are composed by mud, sand, and bioturbation. Sorry, but this picture is quite dark. But basically, typically they have this kind of degradational gradient. So this is uh, sediment from the expedition. Uh, 339, and this is how it looks like in more in detail. You have sand, lamination, clays, and it's quite uh, complex, and they don't fix with a typical turbidite. 
And as another important issue that uh, many times this kind of uh, contract uh, deposit are quite rich in organic matter because they have very high sedimentation rate. And I think that's uh, extremely nice for preservation of organic matter. So this is also another important feature of this deposit as uh, we move through the chemical process. Okay, this is the, the classic sequence of one contributed uh, uh, sequence in the, the model to have the different part. And of course, you can, you can find different variation depending how the, the current and the gray size. Okay, you have one recent review of, of this uh, concept in this paper. So and basically, as you have uh, many different types of primary sediment structure that uh, mainly depend on the grain size and the current speed. Okay, where are located now uh, this sediment drift? You can find that they are almost everywhere, especially where you have a strong current, like uh, here in the Antarctic margin. This is the area now I am working. You can find here in Argentina, you have a huge uh, contournetic body that is associated with this uh, bottom current reaching the heavy salt plains uh, in the area of uh, Malvinas. And also you can find here all this main drift. But uh, in the past, when the current are different, maybe we can find important uh, sediment uh, contrary deposit also in the Middle East when the circulation was different to present day. Okay, so now let's move to IUDP expedition 369. Uh, IUDP is, uh, is, a very, is, a, is, is the acronymous for International Ocean Drilling Program, or so now International Ocean Discovery Program. And it's a fantastic international program where scientists from everywhere, they can work and they can send their pro this drilling proposal and uh, if the drilling proposal is accepted, they, they can use the facility of the program, like the, the joiners and other facilities, and you can reach uh, unique opportunities for science, especially for geomarine science. Anyway, about uh, IUDP 339, the beginning is, is around uh, nine, mm, 1992. So during 15 years, different projects and different scientists uh, collaborate in order to develop of this concept uh, to study the, co the, the contrary system of the Gulf of Cadiz, especially uh, Hans Nelson and Dori Gesto, that uh, finally was the other co-chief of the expedition, and also the, Steph the, the PhD thesis of uh, Stephanie Ayabe. And that's, this is the, the base for, for this proposal. And finally, uh, the campaign took place in 2011, during two months, we stay on board of the ship. And uh, during this expedition, we took uh, five sites in the Gulf of Cadiz and two outside the Gulf of Cadiz. Uh, this is also another very important site, the site 1385, we call the Shackleton site, uh, because it's a very important reference for paleoclimatic studies. But anyway, you can see here, how the location of the different site is just a key location for study the different branch of the Mediterranean outflow. You can see here the scars of the Mediterranean outflow when go out through the Gibraltar Strait. He is a, this is the scientific team, and um, basically it was 35 scientists for 40 countries, including Spain, Portugal, Japan, France, Australia, Korea, and uh, was a very nice team. It was a really, really uh, wonderful and very nice team. You can see here through the picture of the, of the work when people is on board. Here we have the, the course, and here we are measuring the different uh, uh, physical property, magnet teams, uh, P wave, and the different physical property. And here you can see the, the cementology is discussing the different data, the different interpretation. Uh, the work on board is very intensive. You work uh, two different shifts, uh, 12 hours, no rest during two months. And so it's, uh, it's uh, very intensive, but it's an uh, absolutely great experience. I absolutely recommend to any student to, to join one of these expeditions. Um, the main problem people is all time talking about science, we cannot avoid. It's a very curative expedition. Here we can see uh, Javier explaining about uh, the drilling to the different members. 
and here uh, everybody very happy when the, we reach the bottom of one of these uh, sites. Okay, uh, I will talk only about one of the sites, the U1387. Uh, this site was located on the upper branch of the Mediterranean outflow. You can see the, the, the different branch. So this is located in the southwest branch. And uh, here is what we know before the drilling. So this is the drill location. And before, normally you have only uh, uh, this kind of seismic profile. And all this age is just age inference. But my experience with contourity system is that all these inferences are always wrong because, I mean, contourity system, the change in the cementation rate is so, so dramatic and so high that uh, normally always broken the expectation. And here we have uh, uh, Professor Jose Flores of Salamanca University um, and dating the different sediment. And uh, when he started to get the date, uh, change everything what we expect. So this is the result. So here you can see the, the fish interpretation when we drill. So we can found that uh, we reached the, the late Miocene and we found two kinds of different uh, drift. And basically in the bottom part, we have interpret turbidite and contourite sediment. This is the sediment that is located on the on the mod. This is the present day mod, but uh, this is the paleo mod. And also we have this kind of uh, debride and slump in the margin. Okay, this is my sketch of the different site. Uh, you can see even the, the, the site are not so far each other, but uh, the, the result we obtain is totally different. So here, again, focusing in the 1389, uh, we reach almost uh, 6 million years. I mean, the, the Mycenaean. We have here this uh, hiatus that uh, has been interpreted when the divertor is straight open again. We have this kind of uh, interbed turbidite and contourite, debride and turbidite, it is a mix. We have a huge hiatus here on this side, but not in the others. And later we have a stronger and stronger contouring system that we interpret like a stronger uh, Mediterranean outflow activity. <clears throat> okay, but uh, anyway, here you can get uh, this idea how complex and um, um, I mean you, you need a three 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 D approach to understand this kind of setting. Okay. So here are few of the scientific objectives of the expedition and few lessons we learned. So basically, uh, we found that we have a weak Mediterranean outflow during the Pliocene, but uh, this Mediterranean outflow has become more and more intense until present days. Uh, the Mediterranean outflow, uh, we also conclude that play a, a major role in the thermal circulation, especially in the Atlantic circulation during certain period, especially when during the ice sheet, when we don't generate deep water because uh, the North Atlantic is caught by ice, the Mediterranean outflow play, play as a critical role. Uh, we also identified the external control in the sedimentation, uh, how cold and warm periods affect to the different branch of the mob. And also we, we could plot the extensive occurrence of sandy deposit. Uh, we also identify different tectonic, the tectonic control. We interpret this hiatus, which we, I showed you before, like a tectonic event, because uh, uh, the Gulf of Cadiz is a very important tectonic area. And also the, the Shackleton site already demonstrated this uh, unique uh, reference uh, with uh, global, because I mean, it's located between middle and high latitude. So it's a key location, like a uh, Rosetta stone, let me say for comparing uh, what is going in the high and middle latitude. Okay. And also what we found, uh, we found many different kinds of contouritic uh, system. Um, basically, uh, the previous model uh, don't fix well with uh, what we found in the Gulf of Cadiz. 
And so different studies propose new models to for explain the contouritic uh, evolution. Anyway, let me say that uh, this expedition was a total success in, in any term. Uh, we have one special issue of Expedition 69, Marine Geology, published in 2016. And about the number of uh, publications, Mediterranean Outflow is among the top uh, oceanographic expedition uh, uh, for the IUTP program. So it was a, it's a very successful expedition. Okay, so now let me talk a little bit about uh, my main interest uh, in this expedition. And it's uh, how paleoclimatic and paleoenvironmental proxies are affected by current. Because uh, going back to, to this model pro proposed by Tedesco, I mean, pelagite are good for climatic reconstruction because basically they are getting what is coming from the water column. But the problem is normally they have very low sedimentation rate. But turbidite, they are not good for climatic reconstruction because basically it represents one event in a very short time. So they don't get a. a, a, a the, the climatic signal is not so well. They are useful for reconstruct different things, but not too much for climatic condition. And contourite, uh, this was my main question. Okay, we have a very high sedimentation rate. We have expanded uh, the different events, but uh, at the same time, we have material coming from outside. So that was my, my question. I tried to understand what's going on. And for understanding this question, I basically I used to tools, I mean, I am an organic geochemist, and uh, my study are mainly based in XRF, uh, X-ray fluorescent scanner, and also in uh, both climatology and radiogenic uh, isotope analysis. And um, what we did uh, with Andre in this publication is uh, we compared the signal of one pelagic sediment. Uh, this site is Marion Dufresne's core, very close to the site 1387. And you can see here, uh, here we represent the last uh, 140,000 years. So we have the, the interglacial and the glacial period. Um, in the pelagic core, we can find this zirconium aluminum ratio that is more or less sensitive to the Henrich, but basically increased during the younger dryas, the Henrich one, and during the Holocene. So basically, uh, many authors interpreted the zirconium like a proxy from the Saharan dust. When we have aridity, uh, we have more Saharan dust, and this Saharan dust is enriching heavy minerals, and this heavy minerals are enriching zircon. Um, but uh, when we compare with the signal of the zirconium aluminum, the contoured proxy, the signal is totally different. I mean, you can see here all this peak from the Henrich 10, Henrich 9, that these not, are not present uh, in the pelagic core. So Andrea, me and co-authors, we propose that uh, maybe the sitcom is a good proxy for the Mediterranean outflow speed or intensity over our site. And the most interesting thing is that uh, other proxies like bromine that is related with organic matter content is very similar to the signal of the pelagic core. So that's what's very intriguing and, and we, we discuss in this publication this, this issue. And as I told you before, uh, we found all this kind of sediment that uh, they are mixed between turbidite and contourite uh, coming together. And in a nice collaboration with cementologists, uh, we published in this paper with uh, Sandra de Castro, uh, this model. So basically here you can see the, the slope and the contouritic body, and here's the mode. And basically we interpreted uh, that uh, when we have glacial condition, and the sea level go down, and the Mediterranean outflow is not placed in our location because it's going, uh, it's using the other path. Uh, our site is dominated by this kind of gravity flows that uh, where this mode behave like a sink. So even a few co-authors identify a tsunamite deposit in this in this uh, place because basically everything who is falling through the slope finally struck here on the moon. But uh, during the interglacial, when the sea level rise, and our site is, is under the influence of the Mediterranean outflow, uh, the signal is totally different. And also when we have uh, 
humid condition and the river activity is very high. And so we also identify different kinds of sediment. And you can see here in this trunk set, that is just, uh, I mean, like, let me say 50 kilometer, 100, we have really different uh, sediment, depending the how far, how close you are from the, from the bottom current core. Okay, and um, just let you know that uh, now it's ongoing one amphibious proposal, because even with the expedition, uh, IODP 339, we solved many questions, but a few stay still open. Like uh, when start Mediterranean outflow, how works the planet uh, without the Mediterranean outflow? And also about uh, how evolved the Mediterranean salinity crisis. So I don't know if you're familiar, if you are familiar with the Mediterranean salinity crisis, but uh, during the Mediterranean salinity crisis, few uh, studies interpreted that the Mediterranean basically uh, dry up. So you can go by work from Haifa, just to a few lakes to, to Granada. And uh, we have huge deposit of gypsum and allite in this basin. Now they has been interpreted that uh, they are deposit when, when the Mediterranean was closed. But uh, we still don't know really how this, if they totally was closed or not, or which corridor was closed before. So even we have many research, uh, it's many questions that are still open. So in order to resolve this question, uh, we propose uh, one ITB propose, uh, proposal called IMAGE, and it's an amphibian proposal. I mean, we would like to drill in the continent, in southern Spain and also in Morocco, but also in two sites, uh, inside in the Arboran Basin and also outside. Uh, in the Gulf of Cadiz, uh, but we, our main focus is just this late Miocene, I mean, Miocene, highly Pliocene transition uh, deposit. Okay, and that's all. Thank you for your attention. I don't know if I speak too quickly. So if you have any question, any doubt, uh, I am glad to reply. And if we have time, also I can show you one couple of video. I don't know, Nicolas, we have time for the video? We do actually, if you want, yeah. Great, thank you. So this is a nice video. Uh, I hope we are not breaking any copyright issue. <laughs> and uh, anyway, there is available in YouTube. And you can see uh, here the Gibraltar Strait. It's quite uh, narrow, it's only 14 kilometer. And you have the Camarinal Seal. And, uh, you can see how is the flux between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. In fact, it's a, it's a seasonal flux. So here you have the Atlantic water, the Mediterranean water going outside. Um, it's quite uh, pulsational and also generate this very spectacular uh, internal waves that uh, they play a major role in few ecosystem like the cold water corals and different issues. So here you can see how it's going the flux. So basically it's like uh, behave like a dump. And later you have this internal wave. So here's the expression in the surface of the internal wave. You have here Morocco and uh, Gibraltar and Algeciras. So this is how they look on the surface. And this is how they flux outside, they flow inside the Mediterranean. Okay, and another short video. This is about the Mediterranean sanity crisis. So there means many discussion going on, but basically, uh, one of the theories say that uh, we have this slab that uh, uh, this subduction slab was detached and thus promote the uh, one tectonic event, one elevation of this area that finally cut the connection between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic and basically of this region. Dry. 
And uh, at this moment, we could have found in the southern Spain many desertic species coming from Africa and, and reaching all uh, southern Europe. And data uh, has been proposed that there has been one dramatic in feeling of all the basin. Like a uh, few people say catastrophic, few people say it's much lonely and it's not clear. But anyway, it's a very dramatic uh, geological event that happened only five, five million years ago. Okay. So that's all from my side. Do you have any question? Thank you very much, Francisco. Really uh, beautiful talk. And the videos are really amazing, actually. So good that you show them. So I opened the podium for uh, questions um, from the audience. Just get in and- We we'll have questions from the class. Okay, great, fantastic. Hey, uh, hey Francis, um, about the video we show uh, before... So, sorry, I, I cannot listen well. Can you be more close to the micro, please? Where is the Yeah, yeah. Tell me when you're hearing me well, okay? You hear me well now? Uh, I don't listen well, sorry. It's about... Yeah, do you hear me? Okay, a little bit better. Okay, uh, so I, you show uh, some video before and uh, we see the connection between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea between uh, the Gibraltar. And we saw some uh, big waves that, uh, that come, I, I want to understand if, if that's happened seasonally or in which time that uh, wave comes. Yes, uh, this is a very interesting question, and this, this is another level of the complexity of contouritic sediment. Because a few times you have that the sedimentation is seasonal, but also the current activity is also seasonal. Also, the Mediterranean outflow is not contact and constant outflow, it's a seasonal outflow, and also depend of the tides and uh, different factors. Uh, I reply your question, it's enough clear. Pasha, did he answer you? No, we don't hear you, you are muted. Okay, okay, okay. yes, he is fine. Uh, we do okay. have more questions, but uh, just okay. another question. Yeah. Okay, guys, for the next time, you have the uh, microphone just in the corner of the table. I see it in the, in the video, by the way. Next to yeah, you. It's not, yeah, that, it's, no, it's not connected. I, I, I think, uh, okay, okay. We need, to, we need to fix that. Okay, more questions? Um, yes. Okay, we have a question in the chat. I will go to that one. Karen is asking, can we use paleocontorites in order to see Paleo flows of the Tethys, um, of the Tethys Ocean? Uh, yes, of, of course. I mean, uh, normally contourite appear when you have a strong current. And uh, when, the, when the Paleo Tethys start to be more narrow and you have a more, I mean, if you have any kind of deep water or generation or any current straight, normally we can expect uh, to have contourite deposit. In fact, now it's ongoing very interesting research in uh, in, Chip in Chipre, Cyprus, where they recognize a huge <coughs> contouritic deposit. I am totally sure that in Israel and in the Middle East, in different locations, uh, more and more, when the people are most familiar with this concept, we, they will they identify more contouritic uh, deposit. And uh, when you identify them, they allow you to reconstruct the 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 evolution of the current. Okay, um, more questions? Hmm. So, uh, can I question? Yeah, please. Yeah, please go ahead, Gabriel. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Francis, for the presentation. I just wanted to get a clarification about uh, the deposition of contourites. Uh, are there situations whereby in some particular locations or regions, 
the the current is not high as presumed, and we still have a contrary deposition in some deep sea environment. Maybe there is low current and is not as strong as uh, the ones you show us from the map. Yes, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, I will show you one video, and you can you can see. I mean, I will share the screen again. It's okay, mm -hmm. Nicolas. Now you can yes. see my screen. Yeah, we see. Uh, okay, so here you can see the present day. Uh, recent depositional location, no? An example here, you can find these huge contoured fields, and I would like to, sh uh, to show you this video. It's a very spectacular video. I strongly recommend to, to everybody. So this is the situation in, the, in Antarctica. And here you can see uh, the formation of deep water. And so you have this kind of deep water formation in Antarctica. Here you have in color the, the speed and how you have this strong current going to the abyssal plain that, that generating Antarctic margin. But here you can see how they interact with the topography. Here we have Argentina, I mean, this is South America. And also here you can see the season. Uh, so you can see how the speed change uh, when they are traveling through different geomorphological features, and also how it's influenced by the formation of this deep water. So you can see how the speed change from winter to spring, and uh, in any occasion when you have this strong current, you will generate this kind of contaminated uh, deposit. Uh, is enough be my my question, Gabriel? Yes, yes, you, you, you are in the right direction. I mean, it answers it because I'm just curious because of the same map you showed. Uh, that, that was a, a, a presentation of a model that was done like uh, five years ago uh, with uh, ExxonMobil. And you know, uh, somewhere in the West Africa, along Nigerian coast to Ghana coast, there was a model that talks about a contralite uh, production system. So just like uh, it was a huge exploration did for them, but then I'm trying to imagine the current in uh, South uh, in West Africa and how low it was, and for them to be generating uh, from the deep sea. I mean, oil and gas exploration. So this is why I'm asking if it is possible in some instances when you have a low low current and influence and they still have some deposition of contract. So I think you, the video explains it. It's not so huge, but there are still some deposition from what you show mm -hmm. contract. Yeah. It was an ExxonMobil uh, model of where they are producing their oil from at the point, I think five years ago or thereabouts. So, thank you. Um, somebody else that has a question? Yeah, Itik is raising a hand, I think. Uh, hi, Francis. Uh, thank you for the, for the talk. It was a great talk. Very interesting, very nice. Um, I have some questions. Uh, one question, uh, you guys, uh, the, 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 the center of the contourite uh, community, you sort of equate contourites with major contourites. You, like the map you just showed now are huge contourite deposits that are uh, thick and big and whatever, but couldn't contourites be just uh, meters thick everywhere uh, or everywhere or is is there a distinction between small and real contourite? Yes. Make a distinction. Yes, this is uh, still ongoing because the problem is when you uh, look contourite, maybe later everything becomes contourite. I mean, you don't trust pelagic, pelagic sediment anymore. And 
in fact, uh, you have what uh, they call blast, blast culturate, that uh, they have a huge station, extension. And so at the end, all the time, you have a mix between hemipelagic and culturate deposit. And a few times, they don't have this kind of super high cementation rate. Uh, it's a very nice map, uh, I mean, geom ge geomorphological map. Uh, of the Arbor and Sea, I think by Pedro et al, they, they proposed this map. Um, basically, everything is uh, plastered plus contourite, but the cementation rate is not so high. Uh, so finally, it's difficult to say at the end, it's like, okay, like 40% uh, is contourite, 60% uh, is hemipelagic, or, I mean, if you sediment, it's, it's difficult to put the limit between both. So when you have during this kind of big bodies, it's no problem. Yeah. But, but in other locations, it's, it's more problematic. Yeah, you know, we just published a paper about a six meter core showing a mixed system between cotoites and turbidites here in the continental shelf. But those are like a contourite unit, turbidite unit, contourite unit, turbidite unit along the core. Yes. And so I was wondering if are we legit? In this uh, in this sense, um, but I guess I guess uh, the the ballot is opening is open, right? Uh, yes, I mean uh, we make few proposals like uh, when you have uh, a, a turbidite inside one continuity system, using inorganic chemistry and other parameter, at some point you can say, okay, here is pure turbidite, but uh, here is start to be more and more influenced by the contourite. We, we um, actually we actually use the we actually use a, a planktonic and, and, and a fossil fossil evidence uh, of the source of the material uh, to to distinct uh, another another thing that I was excited to, to see is this image pre proposal where uh, where you're talking about uh, imaging the Messinian, basically investigating the Messinian salinity crisis through the expression on contourite, if I understand correctly. Uh, um, we've proposed a, a model by which uh, the, the drawdown, the Messinian drawdown only, only occurred uh, at stage two, while the deposition of the salt uh, started from the beginning and, and people are even talking now about the, the Messinian drawdown being at the end of the Messinian rather than uh, rather than at the at the center so there is a big argument on where and how much drawdown there was um, um, are you uh, considering those scenarios in this uh, in this proposal yes I mean we have uh, even different teams in this proposal, they have different idea about what's going on during the senior sanity crisis. And so, I mean, uh, I, I totally agree with you. It's, it's many arguments going on. And uh, we select this location just in order to try to resolve all this question. But uh, it's still unclear. <laughs> <laughs> because in the, in the movies you show, in the movie you showed, everything was very, very simple. Exactly. Yes, it's, it's, uh, this <laughs> presentation was totally an oversimplification of everything. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, thank you. It, it, the the other uh, the other thing is 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 this is this uh, typical contouristic uh, section that you've uh, that that you've shown, talking about the beginning of a current. Uh, it's a stronger uh, phase than weakening of a current. Um, is this is this something that is occurring in a general sense, really, or or is it more something that is characteristic of the floating So sorry, I couldn't listen the last part of the talk. Sorry, sorry. Yes, the microphone is very directional. I shouldn't let go. Uh, I'm saying that typical uh, section of the contouride that you show that it starts from a weak contourite, then stronger contourite, then weaker contourite. There are two things about it. One, it, it, it assumes a transition from, a, from more clay content into sandy content and then back into clay content, which may mean that you are changing the source of the sediment through this uh, process. 
is, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the problem of contract is, uh, in my sense, is, is strongly depend the material you have before. Because, I mean, I am also working in, in carbonate concrete system and the signal, the result is totally different. And so basically, contourite uh, is strongly uh, connect with the concept of uh, shorting or winnowing. And at the end, uh, you need to know very well what is the, the source, I mean, what is the origin of the sediment. And depending what you have, the result will be totally different. And depending if the current is more strong or less strong, the result will be different. And so basically, if you are close to the core, what you expect is the fine fraction, the place, and also the, the nano, that is a very important issue, the, the nano forces will be removed and you increase the, the grain size. But uh, this is also very important to know that the, from where you are coming. And uh, until now, that's, uh, that's what's the typical sequence we, we think. But uh, now we understand it's more complicated. I mean, it's a uh, more complicated interaction. I, I strongly recommend you this paper of uh, De Castro. We, we try to explain yes, yes, all this. I know the paper. Okay, yes, we actually reference it in our paper. Yes, I've seen this paper. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. This is a very good paper. It's a, it's, it's given us a, a good uh, look at, at things. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. yes, it was, let uh, us I, suspect that what we have is the contourite. Uh, really, from there we got the idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you very much. <laughs> a pleasure. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. And more questions, perhaps. Well, in that case, I guess that we will uh, will close the event. Uh, thank you very much, Francis. And um, and I wanted to know if you want to stay in our mailing list for the future events that we have. Uh, I, I will be very glad to to join the, okay. the list. Great. Great, fantastic. We have several speakers also dealing with my geoscience. Perhaps you will find it also interesting Absolutely. for you. I watched okay. the schedule and looks very interesting program. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, okay, everybody, see you next week. Um, and next week we are going to Israel, actually. <laughs> okay. See you, everybody. Fantastic. Have a good afternoon. A Thank pleasure. You. Thank you very much, uh, Nicolas, for organizing everything and for all these nice questions. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Thank you.